Well, welcome, 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 and happy Tuesday, everybody. So excited to be back with you for another awesome week. Hope everyone had a wonderful weekend. And wow, are we in for a treat today? because we are going deep today. Uh, last week, we had an awesome conversation about nutrition and health, but today I have an amazing expert who focuses specifically on brain health and memory loss. Absolutely remarkable. And we're gonna learn so much together. It really kind of piggybacks off of what we learned last week. So she is a mental health counselor who specializes in brain health research. So put on your smart caps, people, because this woman is pretty dynamic and really has a lot to share with us. So I'm going to take a minute and introduce you to Becky Sharon. And Becky, if you would take a minute, I would love it if you could tell everybody um, what your background is and how you ended up getting into this field. That would be amazing. Oh, well, thank you for such a warm welcome, Leanne. It's just great to be here. Um, my background is I grew up in the Midwest and I was, I worked, I owned gas stations. It's crazy. I had 150 employees and 25 gas stations and raised my daughter doing that business. But after she grew up and went off to college and started on her own, I decided that I don't want to do this anymore. So my husband and I moved to Florida and sold our business. And it's like, what am I going to do? And I, after kind of trying all many different things, I ended up uh, becoming a mental health counselor. I got my master's in mental health counseling, going back to school. And I started do, doing some, just learning more about the body and what I, what's important. And it, I came across a man by the name of Daniel Amen, Dr. Daniel Amen. And he has the largest scans, brain scans of football players in the United States. Mm -hmm. And he has a program that was certified to certify people in brain health. And I applied for the program and was accepted for a year certification protocol. And they were looking for physicians. And my friend who is a physician, she decided to do it with me. And we ended up doing that certification together and became partners and been doing that, you know, adding to our practice and doing that ever since. What brought me to today is though along the way, learning to be a brain health coach uh, and certified in brain health, my husband who had had a stroke 20 years before, I didn't realize it, but had been losing his memory and along the way, totally lost his sense of direction. He couldn't get from our house to the grocery store, which was just a mile away. He didn't know where it was or how, where to turn. And he was funny and he would hide it. So he would make these jokes or just say, you know, don't worry about it, whatever he did that I just didn't realize it until one day it was almost like, you know, the whole house fell down all at once. It was shocking to me that I didn't realize he couldn't remember very much at all. He was making very bad decisions and I had to decide to take care of him. But I'm still learning brain health. I'm still doing these things. And at the end of my certification program, we were able to go to the Amen Clinic in Atlanta and have our brains scanned. So my partner, she and I and our husbands went and we had our brain scanned. And one, we were getting the interpretations of my husband's. It was amazing because everything they said, I knew. What I didn't know is he knew that something was wrong. And he knew how bad it was because he was really afraid. But the last thing the doctor said is that this can be reversed. And it was amazing, but it took us, we came back to Naples. I live in Naples, Florida, and it took about nine months, but his memory is restored. And it's amazing. even more amazing. My husband is 16 years older than I am. So that was at 76 years old and or 75 then and then at 76 became a certified personal trainer two years older than anybody had ever taken or passed that test so it's really just amazing what's possible which is very exciting to me <laughs> you said like a hundred things in there i loved so i don't even know where to start i mean i love that you of course you know you broke a barrier and in this community here we love women that break barriers so it's really right. neat that you did it at an age that was different, et cetera. But let's back up because there was a lot. First of all, I appreciate your 
you know, openness and vulnerability in sharing your personal situation. And I know that so many of us are dealing with, um, you know, memory loss and brain issues with family members. A lot of us, it's our parents or our in-laws, et cetera. We have family members that are going through that. And there are some stages. So if you would take a minute, I know they hide it and there's anger and, you know, just to let people know what they're experiencing is normal. Can you take a minute and address that, please? Right. It anything you're experiencing is normal. Like there's not a right or wrong. It becomes like, this is different than it was before. My husband would get, he's funny. He tells jokes, tells stories all the time, but he started only talking about things from long ago, from when he was in Vietnam. He wrote a book during this time and he didn't even put me in the book. It's like, he, wow. it's not that he didn't know we were married, but it wasn't where his brain was. It was in Vietnam and it was with his ex-wife and his kids and it just never moved forward. It was really interesting. Um, and it's frustrating when it's your spouse. You know, they, it, you're already, the, the person you love is the person that you may not treat as well as you should or could or would like to, you know. So they get frustrated, they get mad, they blame you for everything. He would tell me that I was not, I was hiding things from him, that I was talking to my daughter and we were being secretive and, and it was so opposite his character. But then with my parents, you know, I deal with a lot of the same thing with my parents. Both of them are in their 80s. My father and mother are, my father is aware he's losing his memory. My mom denies it, mm -hmm. yet it's happening. So then she gets mad and doesn't talk to me or I have to manage how things happen so that bills get paid or, uh, you know, we, the stories go on and on. And so there's, the stages are, be kind to yourself. The stages are about you. <laughs> you know, whatever's going on, be kind to yourself. Take a breath. You know, find people to talk to. There's great some great Facebook pages to talk to, to, to just know that whatever you're going through is normal and hard and anything else you can imagine, stressful. And then you have what they're willing to do like my husband's a very compliant person. When he had a stroke, he went to four neurologists before we found what caused it. But most people would have given up after a couple. But he's very compliant. Thank goodness. It's, I'm blessed with that. don't even want to go. They'll deny right. that. <laughs> right. I mean, my parents, it's a whole other ball game, you know, you know. They, they like to move and they want to move. And yet my dad loses his credit card every other day. He loses his wallet days. He parks in wrong places. He is just, and then it's, oh, well, you know. So they are, they get like little kids. They start hiding things. And then you got to figure out what they're hiding. And, you know, and then you got to address it in a way that you can actually help and make a difference and not have them be, you know, hurt, harmed, or taken advantage of. I mean, or you know, and just relieve some of the stress that's making it worse on them. You know, I'm so yeah. glad you're talking about this because, you know, I've been through this personally too with a family member. We, a lot of people have been through this. And in the beginning, um, you know, in that denial, it's fear. But when they do that and they're angry and they say really bad things to you or they stop trusting you or they think you're out to get, it's not easy to hear that from someone that you really love. So I, I love that you're talking about it so openly. So if somebody is going through that right now, hopefully they won't take it so personally. That person's going through, they're going through it. You know, your words of wisdom to be kind to yourself are pretty powerful. <laughs> right, you, you know, this too shall, it, you know, nothing, almost nothing has to happen right that second. Yeah. So breathe, like take a minute and breathe, you know, and remember, you know, I, I'll, I really try to remind myself that in all of our lives, the people that love us, our parents, our spouse, they're doing the best they know how, not the best they can, the best they know how. Mm -hmm. And they raised you the best they know how, and they loved you unconditionally. And it's your time to give back and really just give giving back in acceptance and allowing for whatever it is, whatever it is. Um, because resistance just makes it worse for everybody, but especially for you. And you're the one that is 
right on the front line, taking all the bullets. So you also said something really powerful about what happened to your husband, because the common notion is that when memory decline or cognitive decline begins, that it's just whether it's going to be rapid or slow, but not, you don't really hear conversations about people reversing it. And right. also there aren't a lot of conversations about preventing it. I think probably some of those things overlap. Can you address both of those? Like how would you go into it trying to maintain your brain health moving forward? And if somebody's experiencing it, what are some things they can do? Right, yeah, absolutely. And like you said, your speaker last week had really great information to share because it is about what you put in your body. The issue is that you can put the best things in the world in your body, but our food sources are getting worse and worse. We're not replenishing the, the, the soil. We are allowing poisons that no other country allows. There's, so there's a lot going on, but there's some really great things you can do. One, how healthy is your brain? Most of us don't know. And I think that's just crazy. We go to the doctor, you get a physical, you know everything about your body except how healthy your brain is, which has a little bit to do with what's gonna happen in your life, just saying. So a brain, and if it, and in one way to get a baseline is to go to somebody that does neurofeedback and does a brain map because they can give you at least how well your brain is functioning. All right. So that's really, really imperative in my view. Learning your genetics. Do you have any blocks in your genetics that do allow you not to absorb nutrition? There is new, there are nutrients you need. Can you detox or do you have a block in your methylfolate, you know, that you need to change? Is your is your detoxification system, you know, have genetic markers that block it? That can be subsidized, that can be new, you can subsidize it with nutrients. And one way to find out is 23andMe or ancestry.com. You can get that, you know, do their spit test and they come back to you with your ancestors. But I didn't care about that part. I wanted the raw data because there's about five that I know of, but many doctors have access to it. Um, they'll download the raw data and tell you what genetic SNPs you have blocks to, and even give recommendations to how to, to add nutrients to support the blocks um, and how, how important that block is. So there's a lot of really great information out there. You know, I've used NutraHacker, but Douglas Labs do it. There's a lot out there. So asking- I'm gonna stop you for one minute because you're really knowledgeable, but what's a brain map? You said, where did you get a brain map? What's a brain map and where do you get one of those? So can you take a second? Okay, sorry. That? Yeah, that's why it's great. That's why we have you here to teach us all. Uh, so a brain map is when they, a, somebody who is certified in neurofeedback, all right? And neurofeedback, all that is, is a frequencies. Frequencies, our brain operates in frequencies. People, I'm sure have heard of delta waves, gamma waves, theta waves, all those waves. Well, our brain has all those waves going on. So delta waves, we're sleeping, right? We, we hear that, you know, oh, if I have delta waves, I'm sleeping. Or, or if I meditate, I get an you know, alpha, alpha state. Maybe you've heard that. So those waves are in every part of our brain. But scientifically, they know in certain parts, certain waves should be stronger than others, more powerful, how they should connect. And so it takes about, you know, you can do, 10 minute test and it doesn't hurt it's non-invasive it is just put a helmet or a cap on you i'm looking because i can even show you one that you put on your head and then they attach it to a computer and run a program that puts it through a, a really significant quantitative analysis but gives you a result which is a baseline for how well your brain is functioning based on your uh, a normative database group. So normal people that are not diagnosed with medical or psychological issues. So you have a baseline. You know, experiencing anxiety or frustration is not normal. Your brain's not functioning optimally. It may not be a problem. You may not want to address it, but it's using resources in your brain. It's diverting them from doing something else that your body needs. And so it's you also mentioned um, when we had talked before today, you talked about sleep apnea. And I thought that was amazing. Can you talk about that 
And yes. what the so when I said, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. When you said that some can be restored and some can't, you don't hear about that. That's correct. And that's just my message is to don't, it's not losing memory, like feeling like you're losing memory or can't remember a name or, or lose your keys doesn't necessarily mean you have dementia or Alzheimer's or mental or cognitive decline. It means that your brain is under stress. There is something going on and that's the brain's way of telling you. Just like when you hurt your knee and you have pain in your knee, that's pain for the brain. So what's the cause? Is it sleep apnea cuts the air off when you sleep? And it's not just when you snore. Don't people think that sleep apnea, people that snore have it, people that don't snore have it also. So do a sleep study test, you know, talk to your doctor. He can see markers in your blood that would, would likely, you know, you may have sleep apnea. So many people have it, but sleep apnea can stop. Like it, you get on a CPAP machine and it halts memory decline. It halts it. So then you can go about restoring it, but you first have to find out the root cause of what's going on so that you can stop the decline before you can turn it around. Lots of time, 95% of our serotonin neurotransmitters are in our gut, 95%. That's the happy pill, the sense of well-being, the happy pill, the reason we exercise to get that, you know, to get that great feeling, it's in your gut. Well, guess what? If the little bugs, I'm, you know, I'm not a scientist, as, you know, I'm not a medical person. So I, this is my lay, lay language, layman's language, little bugs, they're all messed up. We don't have the right number. They're not doing the right thing. And we got to clean them out and get the right bugs in there doing the right things. Because nine times out of 10, I can reduce anxiety just by cleaning up a gut. That's incredible. So do you detox people or what are the things that you do with them to clean that up? So, yeah, so I have a functional nutrition health coach certification too, because I, my partner is a, a DO, but she's certified in regenerative medicine because we believe that it is a whole body approach. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go, when you look and you think it's one thing, it, could, it likely will make it better. But if you don't find the root cause, you're never going to be able to reverse to the quality of life that you deserve. So, um, sleep apnea is one thing. It's one of the easiest things to look for. You know, it's so easy and so many people have it. Sometimes it's, you know, it, lots of times it is trauma that has caused this. And we don't even know it. It could be from birth. It could be, you know, we asked the very first question, question we ask is how was your birth? You know, because if you lost oxygen, when your mother was giving birth to you, you killed brain cells. Really, even and all those years later, that has an impact. The what you see at, at my age and older and 25. at any age, 25, <laughs> right? Or 30, maybe started a long time before. Remember, my husband had a stroke more than 20 years ago. He came home from the hospital. He couldn't walk. He had to teach himself to walk, teach himself to eat. He mm. would look, he would throw things up and throw his arms and he couldn't understand everything we were saying because we were talking too fast. But you would not know that. I mean, you've met my husband. You, I mean, he didn't look any different, you know, because it only took him, I mean, what did it take? About a year for him to do that or less than that, probably six months. So you wouldn't be able to tell. But his brain was struggling then. It's just, we, our brain's amazing. It regenerates, we, it does, it compensates. I mean, he, his, he killed part of his brain and part of his brain is dead. The part that knew how to balance and knew how to walk. And it, your brain, it brain reorganized and it has new systems, compensatory systems that allows him to do that. Your brain does that for as long as it can until it doesn't have enough resources. Then it has to take it away from some things. And that's when anxiety shows up. That's when memory loss. So, you know, finding the root cause is the number one thing to do. Sleep study is really good. Doing a detox, it doesn't, not one of those crazy ones with colonics and all that. You really can just get down to some supplements that'll support you and eating really healthy fruits and vegetables and good proteins and not very many proteins for a small period of time to allow your body to spend time getting rid of toxins as opposed to digesting.
Mm. But infrared saunas are amazing to help detox. Beamer, we, we, we have in our practice the Beamer, Beamer technology, which helps your microcirculation, detox, get rid of inflammation. Anytime you have inflammation, you are taking resources from your brain, from your body to fight that inflammation. So eating sugar is just, there's no nutritional value in sugar. Sugar, they did a study with rats. Did anybody, I don't know if they told you, they did a study with rats and they gave them a choice, sugar or cocaine. The rats ate the sugar. No. It's the most addictive, in my opinion, it's the most addicting substance in the world. And it- You and Barb all, last week, you two need to hang out because- Right? She's an all does sugar is, queen too. There's a theme yeah, going on here. There's yeah. a theme. It kills brain stem cells. And it doesn't, we see, here's the thing. It doesn't mean you never have it. I don't believe in never having it. I just don't believe in that. But if you don't clean it up, clean it out, get, get to a level where your brain, your body naturally takes care of itself. It re regenerates, your brain regenerates for your whole entire life. And you detox. You have a detox system in your body. You just have to have, give it a chance. That's really remarkable how much that all can impact. And you said something about exercise, um, going into it as a preventative measure or trying to reverse it. Does exercise do anything regarding that? What's the impact, if any? So exercise is really great because anything that you do that's good for your heart is good for your brain. Everything you do for your heart is good for your brain. So, you know, exercise gives you that great feeling. It moves blood flow, which you need to do. There's all those things that are really great to support your body. It's preventative. But if you're experiencing brain, you know, memory loss, mm -hmm. hyperbaric oxygen is what we would go to if that's the cause of the decline. My husband did, I'm going to tell you, it ultimately ended up being over 100 sessions of hyperbaric oxygen because even though it's not FDA approved, it's off label. And for whatever reason, whatever that problem is, we know, you know, science knows that oxygen under pressure regrows, layman's terms, stem cells that regenerates your brain. It regenerates your brain. It regenerates my husband's memory, that and neurofeedback. And eating okay, healthy. So hold on, because this is where you're really smart. I'm going to slow you down for a quick second. So some people won't know what that is or okay. where you get it or okay. wh why it works. So just so that people can stay with you on that, because you're extremely educated in this world. If someone's hearing all this for the first time, can you take a second and just break that down if you don't mind? Absolutely. So hyperbaric oxygen. Think of it like when divers you see in a movie or you've heard that a diver when comes up too fast gets the bends and they put them in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber it's you know that's what hyperbaric oxygen chambers are only they have hard chambers and soft chambers soft chambers are ones that look like a tube and they they're sealed shut you can get out and you can get in but it's sealed shut and then pumping oxygen in that's a mask that has like 85 to 90 percent oxygen the whole unit has about 65 percent oxygen it's regenerative it's anti-aging it's what they do for diabetes patients when they can't heal their wounds so that's hyperbaric oxygen they have hyperbaric oxygen centers in most cities um, before we got our chamber in the practice, I sent my husband to Cincinnati. They have a huge center there and um, they did a great job, but hyperbaric is slow and long haul. You know, you don't lose your memory fast and you don't get it back fast. It's a lot faster than when you lost it, but it's, it, you're not going to feel any different. My husband went for 20 sessions and the 20th, he said, it's like I kind of woke up from a dream. And even at 20, I didn't see a difference until about 45, 40 to 45. Because when somebody has memory loss, you're directing them, go here, go here when they're driving. And I was directing him and, and I said, turn here. And he goes, that's not right. I'm like, and I'm, you know, not paying attention, right? I'm looking at, I'm like, oh, no, you're right. I mean, like he actually knew it was like, oh, Oh, <laughs> so, you're probably really you know, excited, you know, like, oh, I gave you the wrong directions. <laughs> right. So, you know, it's not an overnight thing, but is that, yeah. Yes, so neurofeedback, so neurofeedback is another holistic, very 
very known science where when we talked about the brain map and they measured, we can actually train the brain using frequencies like Pavlov trained, trained his dog, you know, where you ring the bell and, and the dog salivated, if anybody remembers from school way back when, you can actually teach your brain these normative habits. And once it goes there, it will, uh, it organizes itself. It knows what to do. It just needs to get a little bit closer. It's like, just get close and it'll go for it. It's really amazing. And, you know, I, I've been through several experiences and I think, you know, you're awesome to share all this. I think a lot of people have, and it seems like it's more and more. I don't know if it's because of the food we're eating or how long we're living or all of the above. I, I'm not really sure. I would suggest it's our nutrition. Honestly, I think we're just not getting the nutrition, the toxins, you know, we're just not. So on that note, I know that you um, emphasized, uh, just like Barb last week, that sugar seems to be the devil. If you were talking to somebody and you said, hey, here's two or three things you should try and either limit or stay away from, and here's a couple things that would be good for you on the nutrition side, because not everyone will do an overhaul, but you know, sometimes people go, oh, I can make an effort and either exclude or limit this and maybe include or add this. What would you throw out there as suggestions? Yeah, absolutely. So I do this a lot with clients because not lots of people aren't willing, don't want to, aren't willing to, and I want them to be successful. So don't, don't eat sugar. And if you eat it, pick what you love and enjoy every single bite of it. <laughs> That's my philosophy. If you're going to eat it, you need to eat it and enjoy every bit of it because guilt won't make it anything better. So choose it and enjoy it. Some people are really good at eating one bite. Some people can't, whatever that is for you, but just do it consciously. Um, you know, add more vegetables to your plate. You know, I, I, have, I have somebody, he came to me and he's like, I need to lose 10 pounds and I eat pasta. I'm like, okay, uh, this is what I'm gonna have you do. You can have pasta, you know, pasta. If you wanna have pasta, I don't care. But I want you to eat a cup, I told him a cup, a cup of vegetables at every meal, just a cup, then eat whatever else you want. He lost his 10 pounds in like two and a half weeks. I mean, because he really started to pick and choose and he didn't, you know, giving up something is just doesn't work. You know, you got to work it the way you want to work it, however works for you. And it'll show up. If you start eating nutrition, your body goes, oh, this is good. It'll even start tasting better. You know, we're just, we just put Pringles, Pringles. I always say this, Pringles, you put it, they scientifically engineered their statement. You can own, you can, it says you can, you can't eat just one. It is scientifically engineered so that you can't because when you put it on your tongue, it hyper arouses or hypersensitive one, your, your flavor, your taste bud, one bud that pre creates a craving. That's remarkable. So it, it's interesting because Barb said something last week too, that some of the foods are designed almost to be addictive. They are designed for addiction. Absolutely. There is no doubt. And I've never seen anybody addicted to spinach. You know what I mean? Right. Well, <laughs> and <the> problem. <laughs> you know, it's processed foods. Like I tell my clients, you know, don't buy nuts, roasted nuts or those kinds of nuts. It's not that nuts are a problem buy them raw and keep them yourself. So you know what they're doing with them. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't know how can a package say zero calories and have ingredients. Yeah. You know, I mean, broccoli has protein in it. Broccoli has calories. So yeah, you know, it's just about being aware, learning what you're eating, making the decision to eat it. And most of the time I, I've dealt with, you know, maybe not 100, but, but many people come to me because there are many substitutes that you won't even miss what you were gave up. You just, I just, I always just need to know what they, what, do we, what do you really like? And let's see if we can find a better choice because it That's probably awesome. is. And the truth is that your taste buds do change when you stop eating or start eating certain things. You know, years ago I had cut out a couple foods and then if I didn't eat them for a long time, I didn't like them and they gave me a stomach ache, which was really oh. fascinating because I've never, you know, like if you think about it, if you eat an apple or you have a salad and you haven't had one in a while, you never don't feel good because you just sat down and ate some green beans or something, but you can right. feel good from that. So yeah, I think that you and Barbara 
a dynamo team. You should definitely get to know each other. <laughs> we got to connect Florida and New Jersey there. Well, you know, I really appreciate this because, um, you know, your knowledge is incredible and I appreciate you taking the time to be in here. And I think not only do you give people hope in terms of prevention and reversal, but also just letting them know what it's like to be the supporter or family member is so important. So people don't feel alone. Right. And pick your battles. You know, you're not stuck with that brain you have and they're not stuck with theirs, but some people, it, it's just not what they want. So pick your battles. Yeah. You got to accept what other people want. And that's your bat. You know, that's your, for your well being. Well, I so appreciate you being, you know, the only thing about Tuesdays, it goes by like that. I'm like, how, how are you so pissed? But, um, you know, you are in the group. So if people want to communicate with you, you're okay. If they send you messages and I'm sure people will post below this, you know, conversation we're having too. And if you can, you know, check out any of their questions or if somebody wants to reach out to you, is that okay with you? Absolutely. You know, I'm not the best in the Facebook groups. If you message me, I will get it. But if I don't get it right away, don't think personal, take personal and, you know, reach out to Leanne. She's, I'm, I told her she's welcome to give my phone number or anything that I'm happy to talk to anybody. I would be glad to, we got to get the message out. It's just not, you know, you're not stuck with the brain you're having. You have a beautiful brain. Let it do, let it work for you. I also want to just wrap up and say, I love what you said. Cause if you think about it, you know, every six months you get your teeth clean and every year you have your, I don't, but nobody ever <laughs> checks on your brain, which is kind of a big thing that you made a point about. I never really thought about that before. It's crazy, right? It is kind of crazy. So thank you so much for your time and for being here. Enjoy Florida. I'll tell you this morning, I went out to walk our puppy and it was 25 degrees this morning. So <laughs> I'm sure. Oh, wow. wow. I'm sure we're having a grand old time in Florida. It's beautiful down there. Yeah. I, I haven't been out since this morning, but I know it's not 25. It's not 25 <laughs> degrees ever, but thank, thank you. you. I really thank you appreciate your, your time and your kindness and your incredible knowledge. So thank you so much. And uh, everybody will see you back here next Tuesday, live at five. So uh, take you. care and everyone have a great week. Thanks again, Becky. Looking forward to it.